Welcome to another Pivotal Cloud Foundry demonstration video. In this video, we'll be taking a look at a blue-green deployment of an application using the RabbitMQ Federated Queue functionality. So first, let's take a look at what we're going to use for the demo. We've got a Spring Boot producer app that talks to a RabbitMQ queue, and then a consumer app that consumes the messages put onto that queue. We've got a pre-configured federated queue set up in a separate RabbitMQ instance. And then we'll be using the CFCLI with the autopilot plugin installed and you can see the URL to download that plugin on the screen. Now we'll look at what we'll do in the demo itself. So we'll have a producer and a consumer app producing consuming messages to the RabbitMQ queue. Then we'll issue a failover to a new consumer app. That'll push messages across the federated queue and bring the consumer up against the second RabbitMQ instance. Then we'll repeat that process with the producer side and fail it over to a new producer instance that'll then produce messages to the second RabbitMQ instance. And then we'll have both producer and consumer running against that instance. While this demo shows how we could upgrade applications by switching the RabbitMQ instance they're associated with online, you could also use this functionality to switch to an upgraded RabbitMQ instance itself by connecting an older version and a newer version of RabbitMQ via federated queue functionality. So if we look at the Cloud Foundry Apps Manager interface, we'll see we have a consumer and a producer app both running. Consumer app pointed at the Rabbit1 Rabbit service. And then the producer also pointed at that Rabbit1 RabbitMQ service. So if we take a look at what those apps are doing, you can see that they're both producing and then consuming those messages. So now we'll take a look at the manifest for our consumer and producers and then the new versions of those as well. So see the consumer and producer were both pointed at that Rabbit 1 service and a new consumer and new producer will be pointed at the Rabbit 2 service. So we'll now run the autopilot plugin which is a zero downtime push to the new RabbitMQ instance for the consumer. And that's going to push this new app and then handle that failover to the second RabbitMQ instance for us. We'll see the messages kept going during that time. And if we pause them and look, we'll see that all the messages were processed. And we'll start it back up. So now if we look at the RabbitMQ2 instance, we'll see that our message rates have now increased. So we are consuming messages on this queue. And we'll see that our federated queue is running now. And it does have a link back to the Rabbit1 instance. A Rabbit1 instance see its workload drop some because the consumers are now operating on a different queue but it's still in operation. So if we look at that consumer app now and verify that it is running against the Rabbit2 service. Now we'll want to fail over the producer side. So once again using the autopilot plugin We'll push this new version of the app that uses the Rabbit2 instance. Now with that producer running, we can look back at our output and once again we'll pause that service. And we see that all messages that were produced were also consumed. I could restart both apps. Now if we look in the Apps Manager app at the producer, we'll see it is also bound to the Rabbit2 service. Now if we look back at Rabbit1, we'll see that there's no activity on that. 
and the queue is now idle. Now if we look at Rabbit 2, we'll see we have all the workload running. And with that, we've now shown a blue-green deployment or upgrade of online applications via the RabbitMQ Federated Queue technology.